So, have you ever thought to yourself, I love PHP, but I wish it had some feature that maybe some other language has got? Or you might think, I love PHP, but I wish it had some other feature. Uh, I've thought that, and uh, this is uh, a story about how I built some new uh, features, some language features for PHP. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing this. There's a difficult way. You can, uh, PHP is open source, anyone can contribute to it. And if you want to uh, propose new functionality or changes to, to the existing software, you can use the RFC process. It's quite a long journey. You create the RFC, you talk to lots of people about it, you have lots of polite conversation about it. Then you have a vote and you've got to get 60 or two thirds of the people to say, yes, this is great. Then you get it implemented and then you upgrade whatever project you're working on to take advantage of your new feature. It is a long and difficult process. It's probably going to take years. But there is another way and it will work for some functionality you might want to introduce. But before we, do, before we discuss this other way, let's have a quick discussion about runtime and static analysis. So any feature that's in, a, any functionality or feature that is in PHP um, uh, will, if, if, you, if you misuse it, it will, it will uh, show you issues at the runtime. So for example, if we, if we ran this code here, we've got this person class, we've got a private method called update, we're creating a new instance of the person class, and then we're calling update on it. And if we actually ran that code, uh, we would get something along these lines, uh, an error thrown. Uh, we're trying to call a private method uh, person update. So this is something we can't do. We don't have the visibility where we've called updates to actually call it. And this is, uh, and this is we've executed the code and we get this error thrown and this is happening at the runtime. We're actually running the code and this scenario happens. But of course, there are a whole selection of bugs where we don't actually need to run the code to see the problem. In fact, if you're used to, if you understand what private means, you can probably look at this code here and you can say, yeah, I can see there's a problem uh, when we call it updates. It's never gonna work. And this is static analysis. This is just us looking at the code, reasoning about it and finding problems. And there's a whole load of static analyzers. Your IDE, if for example, you use PHP Storm, that would point out this problem. There's tools that have been mentioned before today, SARM and PHP STAN. Those are static anal analyzer tools. They look at your code base and they will find problems like this and, and many more. So if you're using static analysis in your, in your development process, you're probably writing the code and at some stage before you deploy it, you'll run your static analyzers on it. Hopefully quite frequently, definitely as part of your continuous integration. But what has this got to do with extending the language. Well, these, these tools like SARM and PHP STAN, you can write custom rules for, and those custom rules can emulate new language features. And I've written some, uh, it's on GitHub, and I've called it PHP Language Extensions. And what this has got, this, this uh, GitHub package, it's actually got some attributes, uh, friend package, and we're gonna look at these later. So these are just attributes that you can add on to your code and we'll see how they work um, in a bit. So what happens is uh, the, the, the GitHub package I've just mentioned, this is just the definition. This just has the attributes in it. And if you put those attributes on your code, you know, nothing will change at runtime. So what you need is you need to uh, tell the static analyzer about um, how to validate these, these additional bits of functionality. So I've written one for PHP STAN, uh, I'll hopefully write one for SARM just as soon as I've worked out how to do that. And who knows, if this was super popular, maybe one day even something like PHP Storm would, would support it. I doubt it, but you know, you can dream. So the first thing I've done is I've made this attribute called package. And I got this idea, I've, I've written many, many programming languages, and package is an idea that comes from Java. And I think many other languages have this concept as well. So in PHP, we've got a visibility of public, uh, um, protected and private. And package level kind of sits somewhere between public and protected. And what it means is if we mark a class or uh, a method as package with the hash package uh, attribute, then we can only call that method or use that class 
from within the same namespace. So what's going on here is we're going to call, and, and a, a typical use case for this might be, is we've got a lot of classes which are collaborating together, but only one of them is something that the wider code base should use, and all the others are just there to break down something, that, you know, a problem into smaller tasks, maybe to make it easier to test or something like that. So imagine we've got this price calculator, and it needs to make use of some other bit of code that works out what a discount is. So we're going to call our, our discount calculator, and we see that we've added to the method um, an attribute that's the hash package attribute. So the, these attributes is something that came into PHP in, in version 8. And you can attach them to methods, to functions, uh, to classes, and uh, properties. But this particular one, you can only uh, connect to uh, uh, methods and, and classes. So what this is saying is, I know I've said I'm public, but what I really mean is you can only call me if the calling code is in the same namespace, and these are both in the same namespace. These are both in the shopping basket namespace. But suppose we had some other code, um, and once again, we're calling the discount calculator, we're trying to get the price, and this is in the some other namespace namespace. And if we look at it, we've still got the package um, requirements on get discount, and that's in the shopping basket. Um, in shopping basket namespace. So because these are in different namespaces, our static analyzer will look at this code and say, actually, you can't make this call. And what we've done here is we've kind of extended the PHP language and we've replicated uh, a Java's package visibility. Another idea is friend. I nicked this from C++. And what friend does is you um, can state on a method the classes which can call this method. So an example of where you might use this is suppose you've got some kind of object you want to build, but maybe you want to leave it to some factory or some builders. That's the only way it can be built. This is just one example in how it can be used. So we've got our person, and on the constructor, we've added the attribute uh, friend, and we've said that only the person builder can call this con the, the, the constructor for person. So we've got a call here, it's a new person, so that will call person's constructor, and we can see it's in the person builder class, so this is all fine. And if we look at another example, um, once again, we've, we've said our friends uh, on person is just person builder, and a friend isn't reciprocated, you know? I might consider someone a friend, they might probably don't consider me a friend, but it's just like this here as well, I've modeled that perfectly. Right, um, <laughs> so uh, we've got our construct method, which we've said can only be called by something called person builder. Um, and we're, we're constructing person here, but we can see that is from the class, another class. Another class is not a friend of the person constructor. So this won't be allowed. So this is also uh, quite useful. In a project I've used it in, as well as this kind of um, limiting uh, the construction of objects to builders or factories, I've also had it where I've had two very similarly named things and I, I couldn't work out how to name them better. So I just said the only thing that really should be calling it is, is you know, is a friend of, of, of that. So that was quite useful in that, that scenario because I'm not very good at thinking of good names. So test tag. Uh, many years ago, I did electronic engineering degree at Bristol. And what they do for hardware is that when they're making their semiconductors, they need to test them. And sometimes what they'll do is they'll add extra pins onto the semiconductor that's just there for testing. So that's either to get some kind of intermediate value or it is there to inject, you know, put, put, the, put the, whatever the, the chip into a certain state. And again, in, 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 in PHP, um, maybe a case where maybe you use this if you're using, for example, doctrine entities, you don't really want a set ID method on your entity because really that should all be done by the database. But it is possible, maybe for some tests, that you do need to have the ID uh, in a correct, uh, as, a, as an actual value, and um, you in order for a test to run. Um, but again, so we create a set ID method, but we don't want that called from actual production code. It should only be called from test code. Uh, another time is maybe you've you've got two classes that collaborate very closely with each other. And the reason you split them apart is just for testing because you kind of wanted to know some, some kind of intermediate value. Again, with test tag, you can do that. You can just expose that intermediate value 
put the test tag attribute on it. And then it's a clear message that this is just here for testing. And if you use a static analyzer with this, uh, with this um, uh, GitHub package, it will make sure that you're only calling it from test code. So we've got our set ID method um, with a test tag on it. And then in our test code, we're actually calling set ID and that's all fine and um, because it's part of a test. Whereas uh, if we just call it in our just normal production code, our static analyzer would tell us off and say, you're not supposed to be calling this. And this is quite good. I, I do see there are, there are some packages out there that try and look at private methods or private data as ways of, of like defeating uh, the visibility methods. But I think this is a better way of doing it because you're explicitly saying this is available and it's available for testing only. Um, injectable version is, is something I've come up with, so it's probably a terrible idea. But uh, what you do is uh, sometimes you've got class, uh, like whole um, class hierarchies, and one of them is, is if you like the interface to, to what it is. So here I've got an emailer, and I'm saying this is the injectable version. So if we reference any types in our constructors, we want to make sure it's this version and not any uh, subclasses of it. So for example, we've got this uh, constructor um, in some service and you see it's, it's uh, got a, a type uh, declaration of emailer, so that is all fine. Whereas in our marketing service, we've accidentally used one of the implementations. We're saying we want something that's PHP mailer. We look at PHP mailer and it goes, oh, what does that implementer extend? Uh, it extends emailer. Well, email is the injectable version, so actually that's the one we should be using and not one of the more specialized versions of it. So that's injectable version. Um, so in summary, using static analysis, you can write custom rules and you can emulate new language features. You can't do everything you want to, but you can do a fair number of things. And if you want to see those in action, there are some GitHub packages. I've been David Lint. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you.